yangu asenesi makire mtuzeha sana nenda finira cheche mekwe uo yangu asenesi makire mtuzeha sana nenda finira cheche mekwe uo yangu asenesi makire mtuzeha sana nenda finira cheche mekwe I was going to turn that on. All right. So we're going to uh, start off with a word of prayer. And uh, then, you know, I'll turn it over to our sister. Uh, <laughs> so she can give her testimony. All right. Hey, Elder, you know, you, you're you my favorite elder, man. You're my favorite elder. And, and, and you be praying too, man. So would you mind? Opening us up with, with prayer, please. Sure. Ta 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 Nanzambi, we thank you hey. for another day. We thank you for bringing us through another week. We thank you for your prayers. We yes. thank you for your covering that you have covered each and every one of us. And we praying and we asking you right now, and as this testimony come forth, that it would touch someone's heart and mind all over the world, oh Yah. Yeah. And we pray and we asking you to continue to lift us up, make us strong where we are weak. And yeah. we pray and we asking you right now that continue to use us and use your people mightily to open the eyes of your people, those who are lost, those who haven't come to the truth. Put it in their hearts and put it in their minds to yeah. receive and not reject. Yeah. We praying and we asking you to move mightily in the land in this hour. We need you, Tata Nzambi, and we cry out unto you. We call upon your name that you will show us the way, that you will lead and guide us into all truth. And for you and your son, Yesaya Congo, our truth, our Congo. Yes. And for this, we say thank you. For this, we give you Matanda Masai. Yes, yes In Yesaya's name. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I'm still overjoyed and overflowing from this morning. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hi, Kate and Sam. Hi. Hi, Kate. Yes. Hey. <laughs> yeah, me, everyone. Hi, everyone. Adopted daughters. <laughs> Two of our adopted daughters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mama right, Brenda Mama and Papa Brenda. Darren. Hello, hello. How y'all doing? <laughs> We're good. 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 The prayer this morning was... Wow. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it? Oh I, I, my I have a I have a lot of daughters now. <laughs> and she and some more <laughs> that are on here. Uh, I didn't I didn't have any daughters, but you know, and I wanted I thought I wanted some daughters and uh <laughs> now I, had a niece. <laughs> I had a niece and I said Father, now I know why you did not give me personally <laughs> any daughters. I can't deal with those hormones. <laughs> and those up and down emotions. Oh my goodness. But he, he gave me some spiritual daughters that are so beautiful. They so beautiful. Are. I have some. Oh yeah, I love goodness. them all. You all know who you are. I don't have to call all your names. You all oh. know who you are. I, I embrace all of them. They are wonderful. They are truly wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, Brenda and I talk about them. You know, they're just beautiful. We love them so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we thank the most high for everyone that is with us and for this beautiful, beautiful woman that I am about to introduce to you. You know, when she uh, graced us, she graced us in a mighty way. And I know 
I know, we know, those of you who have seen her and heard from her, we know that the hand of Tata Nzambi is upon her and his Muanda and Simi is all in her. And, you know, as they used to say in the church, she's a fireball. <laughs> she a powerhouse. <laughs> so I'm going to hush and I'm going to turn it over to her, introduce you all to our beloved sister, our Ndungu, Bangwabele. I do hope I said that correctly. <laughs> you forget that, that I'll forgive you. Is it Van Wabele? Van Wabele. So it's Van Wabele. Van Wabele. Okay. Van Wabele. Van Wabele. Yes. Van Wabele. Van Wabele. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. Forgive yeah. me. <laughs> so okay. here she is. I went doom. Thank you. Jabulela. <laughs> Jabulela Kakulu, uh, which means I'm Kosa. Uh, my name is Bonwabile Abatembu. I'm Kosa. I am from the Tembu tribe. Um, I, well, the most famous person in our tribe is Nelson Mandela. So I come from the same tribe as Nelson Mandela. So my name is Bonabile Abatembu, which means that the Batembus are joyful of the arrival of this baby, which is me. So that's what my name, that's what my name means. But there's a bit of a funny story with my name. Um, I was born in the height of apartheid. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I was, uh, my mom was in a different city because I was a very high risk pregnancy. So my dad wasn't there when I was born. My dad came two days later. So my mom had actually named me Faith and I had a birth certificate because since I was such a high risk pregnancy, she had to have so much faith that, you know, that she would survive the pregnancy and I would survive. So when we both survived, she named me Faith. And then my dad came two days later and he was like, yo, the oppressors are treating us so badly there's no way my i've got a daughter who's gonna have the name an english name for the oppressor so he was like no <laughs> english name so he changed my name i was no longer faith we had to, had to go back to you know to change from faith to bonabil and he named me after himself and so he wasn't safe so it was, it was i was born in a very um hectic time in our country but um, I thank I thank the Most High. So sometimes I call myself Faith because I feel like I am a Faith, even though my dad name changed my name two days after I was born. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so my name is is, is Um I'm Kosa. I am Bantu. Um, Woo! But most of <laughs> all, most importantly, actually, yes, oh. besides yes. being Kosa, <laughs> besides being Bantu. I'm a daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, the creator, yes. my dad yeah. and Zambi. The creator who created Hallelujah. the heavens and the earth. He's my dad Fire. and Zambi. Yes. Yes. I am yeah. part of his remnant. That is who I am. <laughs> I form part of his remnant. Hallelujah. I am an apple of his eye. Yes. Yeah. I am the righteousness Come of Dadan Zambi. Come on. I was bought with a very high price. Messiah yeah. Congo oh, had to pay a very high price for yeah. my life. Yeah. So that is yeah. who I am. As, and as Brother Jonathan would say, I know who I am. Yeah. I know who I am. I know who I am to Tata Kong, to Tata Congo, to Tata Zambi. And that's the most important, even more than being Kosa, you know. Um, for the Kosa people, we we're very proud. Um, we we're very intellectual. Um, if you want to disappoint Kosa parents, don't go to college or don't go to university. You'll be the biggest disappointment. Um, so we are people that are incredibly proud, incredibly intellectual um we are leaders you know we're sort of the know-it-alls of like the bantu tribe like closer That's people right. there's nothing we don't know like we know everything even the things that we don't know we know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we're very we, we are know-it-alls um as the close as as the tembus yeah so that is me i was born mid apartheid um i have got two bantu parents um uh, my parents were born 
also in apartheid, uh, my, both my parents, they got, uh, the type of education they got was something that um, the oppressor called Bantu education. Now, Bantu education is an inferior education. So the white people had one, like had the normal education that we know, and then the Bantu people in South Africa had an inferior education. And with this education, um, uh, for instance, to become a teacher, you only had to study up until grade 10, and then you could become a teacher, and you could teach grade 11 and 12, even though you only went up to grade, um, to grade 10. Um, maths and science weren't taught to Bantus. Um, you know, there's certain subjects because we, the, the, the oppressor was like, why do we need to, to teach them these things? They're going to be farm workers or they're going mm -hmm. to be housekeepers. So there's no need for them to have a proper education. So my, both my parents had that type of education. Um, uh, both of them grew in abstract poverty, um, you know, but I can see now looking back that the hand of that Nzambi was on their lives. Um, I'll just share a little bit about my dad because he's had such a huge impact in my life. My dad, um, uh, he had bound to education and he studied up until matric even though he didn't do math, he didn't do science because it wasn't offered to Bantus. Matric is grade 12 in, in South Africa. And he went to college and he already wanted to be a motor mechanic. So he went and he studied motor mechanic um, and he graduated and he came back with his certificates and he went to a garage, to a workshop, to start his um, practical work. And you know, he had all his files with all his qualifications and he gave it to the white man to ask for a job. And the white man said, there's no such thing as a Bantu mechanic. Here's a broom, mm -hmm. go sweep the floor. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. And my dad took that broom and swept that floor for 15 years as a qualified motor mechanic. Wow. How many years? 15 <laughs> years. Oh, and he wow. says that this one time, him and his boss, had, had, well, like, had this huge fight and he said, out of anger, he said to his boss, the white man, he said, one day I will own this garage. One day I will own <laughs> yes. this yes. shop. Hmm. And 16 years later, he, he did it. just that. He <laughs> went from yeah. being a keeper yeah. to being the owner. Now yeah. that is the power yeah. of my dad and yeah. son. That is the power. Yeah. Yeah. Of, the, of, 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 of yeah you know mm -hmm. so um wow. my parents grew up very difficult in very difficult circumstances but we were so fortunate that when my dad got this business which is still in our family wow. 40 years later Man. still running wow. still thriving it's on the third generation going strong yeah. and running yes. um so because of that i was very fortunate not to i didn't have the typical i didn't had the typical Bantu childhood. Um, I was the 1% of the Bantus. Um, I grew up very privileged. I, my, my dad was a business person. So we weren't poor, you know. Um, I, I, I always say that I don't know what poverty feels like. I've never been poor. My parents weren't poor. And I will not ever, I will never know what poverty means because I, you know, I was very fortunate. Um, we went to the best schools, um, had the best education, and also in 1994, when we got our, our independence in South Africa, my dad was actually the first Bantu man in our street. We were the only Bantus in our street. <laughs> and um, and it, it brought quite a shock to the, to the neighborhood. Um, I remember a story when uh, my mom was in the garden, like land, doing some landscaping and our neighbor from across the road um, came, I suppose she came to welcome, you know, to, to the neighborhood and she came to my mom and she was like um excuse me can i please see your madam you know and my mom was oh, like oh. i am my madam <laughs> the lady did not say goodbye she was like oh okay she and she left and we never she never talked to us ever again oh, so we were like the the anomaly in the street the only bunch of people in our street in 1994 you know wow. and it was very and people it was very it was very taboo for someone who's not in politics to be able to afford a house in um you know in suburbia south africa so um we i, I had the, i had 
I went to school being the only, one of the only black girls at school. It was, you know, it was always quite challenging, you know, um, mm -hmm. and being lesser than, you know. But I thank God for my parents because my parents taught me that, you know, my dad always used to say you have to work hard. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, a white person, if a white person works for 10 hours, you need to work for 20. Oh, yes. Double as hard yeah. to get to where yeah. they are, you know. And that's what my dad drilled in us, that you need to work hard. You know, he used to tell these girls, girls, mm -hmm. you need to work hard, you know. Um, also, my older brother was in, in Umkondo with Caesar. Umkondo with Caesar was the military arm of um of the ANC in the time of apartheid so my older brother he was in the uh, in, in the military arm and my dad got tired because we were always getting raided like the our apartheid police were always coming to us coming to raid us and so my dad got tired of this and built my brother um a little flatlet in the corner of the yard and like made him his own little gate so when the police came he was like no no he doesn't stay in the main house go go there go raid there go raid him there you know <laughs> The police were just always coming to raid and like, you know, wow. they raid everything to strip to look for whatever they're looking for. So um, that's the oh that's the goodness. type of family that um, I come from. Um, and growing up, going to school, um, I remember in high school, um, there was an opportunity for students to go overseas, to go to um, to go to Europe, to tour Europe. And I was one of the very few Bantu girls whose parents could afford to, for me to go overseas. And I remember when I told my, when I told my teacher that, no, no, I'm, I'm going to the Europe. I could see her mind like, you know, short circuiting. Like, what do you mean you can afford to go? Like, you black, you Bantu, you know, like I could see it going. I was like, yeah, no, I mean, I can go, you know, my, my dad is good to pay for this money. And, you know, so it was, I was always that person was always short circuiting white people that, like, no, but why are you here? Like, this is, this is not for you. You know, this is not for you. So um, I had a similar childhood actually to Speshi. Um, and it was, it, it, it's so painful because, because we were striving to be the best to get anywhere. I got to a point, I remember I struggled with English. I couldn't, because I grew up in a, in a rural area, so I spoke his class. So I had to learn to speak English. And my dad was like, you need to speak it and speak it better than them, you know? <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I was like, I learned how to speak it and I spoke it better than the oppressor. I could write it, I could read it, I could spell it. I could do every, you know, everything with English. But the sad part it's is that hours. I lost my own language, you know, yeah. because now I wasn't speaking my own language as much, you know, which is really sad and it's, it's happened to us as Bantus a lot where we losing our we lose our language while we're trying to you know attain and achieve in society you know so um that's that's how I grew up I went to university I was very fortunate to actually go to the same university that Nelson Mandela and the other struggle heroes go to went to which is Forte University in East London so that was quite nice um and even at, at when I, I went to two universities, I went to a black university and a white university. And one of the struggles that us Bantus have at white universities is that when lecturers see a Bantu name, it's minus 40%. Like it's, they just, they are so biased as they're marking your scripts just because yep. they see the bunch of names. Uh -huh. It got so bad that actually the, uh, um, the universities had to change their rules and actually you just write your student number. You don't write your name because once you write your name, the Bantus are so disadvantaged by just writing your name. And like, if you've got a name like me, Bonabile, it's as Bantu as it gets. No white person has Bonabile, his name is Bonabile. So it was, it was the, that's how we grew up in, you know, as Bantu South Africa, you know, it was, it was tough, but we, we learned to be, um, we learned to be strong. We learned to be resilient. I remember when I started mm -hmm. working and I had my first boss, um, who was a white woman and I, and I know why I actually, she hired me. Um, cause I was thinking about it. She hired me because number one, I could speak English well. She saw my dress and she saw that I live in the suburbs. I went to the same high school as her. So even though I was born to, I was, I was like a coconut. I was, I was like, I'm dark on the outside, but like, you know, I'm a bit white, you know, so that's why she hired me. But once I got hired, um, 
I didn't get paid the same amount as my white counterparts who mm-hmm. did the same work, but I got paid considerably less. And the only reason for that is because I'm Bantu. So wow. um, I actually told Ya that never again do I ever want to work for a white man ever again in my life because I that is not my portion. And it's so sad to see our people being mistreated in the workplace yes. just because they are black. Yes. It is, it's the yes. biggest, um, biggest, biggest pain. And, you know, I just pray that yeah, will help me to just be able to create employment for the Bantus. And that's what we're striving to do in our organization, to create, create employment, to empower yeah. Bantu mm-hmm. yes. to be able to be self-sufficient. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Another big problem in South Africa is that our people are so dependent on government grants and getting money from the government that they're not working for themselves. So literally we have to go back and train the people, work the land, learn to be self-sufficient, don't depend yes. on a grant, don't depend yeah. on the government. Yeah. Learn to work. For, but also you understand why people don't want to work because you go to work and you are mistreated just because you are black, just because yeah. you are bound you know but i thank the lord that you know it's been a rough 400 years in south africa but the curses are over now so i'm like thank you most high you know we we survived it's been tough but um the most high um has been so good to us so yeah so that's like a brief brief background of who i am and my family um Mm -hmm. is my niece even though we're very close in age Fun fact about me, Hello. my dad had me when I was, when she was 54. So my dad was 54 years old when I was born. I was born extremely late. So that's why Species mom is my older sister. And there's a 22 year age gap between me and Species mother. Wow. So I'm closer to Species age than I am to my to my older sister's age. So, um, me cool and Spish, aunt. yeah, I'm the cool <laughs> aunt. Uh, and she, I'm sure you've heard her. She called me Makazi, which means that mom's sister in Kosa. So, all your mom's sisters in Kosa go Makazi. They are Makazi. So, um, and also in Kosa, you know, you don't call people first names. So that's why you, I'm sure you always hear her saying Makazi. She'll never call me Bonavila because, like, you know, we don't it's do great. that. We respect, we have lots of respect as, as Bantus. Yeah. So uh, my awakening was a very, it's actually, it's hilarious, the story, how it started. And it's very, li- it's linked with Speshi. Um, so Speshi, there was a government lockdown for coronavirus. Everything was locked down. And um, I wasn't seeing Speshi and her family that much. But, um, you know, uh, her sister was calling me and saying that, you know, my guys, Speshi is listening to these American people all day, all night. Um, you know, I would. She, we are so annoyed and about the American voices. That's all she listens to. She doesn't listen to anything else. And I was like, okay, well, we should tell her to put the volume down. <laughs> we should really just talk to her because these Americans, you know. And then uh, I think a week later, she's like, yo, her sister calls me again, and she's like, yo, my guys, it's gotten worse. Now she's talking to the Americans. The Americans <laughs> are her are mentors. And so now she's talking, she's always just telling during pressure we're talking about these Americans of hers. I'm like, what? And then she's like, and I what that uh, our dad thinks she's in a cult. I'm like, a oh, cult. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she speaking to Americans? Why isn't she speaking to us? You know, and her sister's like, No, Magazi, you need to come and see Speshi. We definitely think she's in a cult. You know, <laughs> she, talk about black Jesus. she doesn't talk about anything else but black Jesus and those Americans. <laughs> Y'all messing so, up. Wow. <laughs> So you have that disruption. You don't know the disruption that caused in our family, you know. And that my poor brother-in-law was so concerned. He's like, "Yeah, there's these Americans. She's always speaking to these Americans. I don't know who they are. I don't know what." And there's this black Jesus, you know. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll go speak to Speshi, you know. So I made an appointment, and I was like, okay, Speshi, I'm gonna come see you. 
And she was like, yes, Makazi, you must come, you must come. I've got so much to share with you. And I came, you know, with my Bible and armed with white Jesus. And I was like, I'm going to get my niece out of this cult. So this is the last thing that I do, you know. <laughs> so I went in and, you know, I remember before I went in, her sister was like, good luck, Makazi. Hopefully you'll be able to speak sense and try and get her out of this cult. Like, now it's, 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 the Americans are, it's just, it's bad now. That's all she listens to. It's all she talks about. It's these Americans and black Jesus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I went oh, in and, so I went in with Katie. I remember we went to her room and we sat down and she was, I think she read Deuteronomy 28 and Ezekiel. She was reading a lot of scriptures. And, you know, there was, the Holy Spirit just said to me, don't discourage her. Don't discourage her. Which now I think is a bit confusing because I'm convinced this girl is in the cult, but the Holy Spirit is telling me not to discourage her. So I was very confused. I just kept quiet. I'm like fighting with the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to figure out where is the cult, you know, black Jesus, what, you know, mm-hmm. and I kept saying to her, but especially what difference does it make if Jesus is blue, black, white, or blue? We all, Jesus loves us all. The Bible says there's neither blue, there's, there's neither Jew nor Jane it's okay jesus loves us all it doesn't matter the color of jesus and she was like no makazi it does it matters what color jesus is but i was like yo these americans and this black jesus is like it's on another level so anyway i went, i ended up going home and um i remember it was a thursday and on friday i went to work and on saturday morning i woke up and yeah the holy spirit just led me to Deuteronomy 28 i was by myself in this office Wow. And I just read it. Mm. And I was like, tick. Bantu, tick. You know, all the curses. I just lent, dread, went through the curses. And I was like, oh my God. Yo. You know, I was just, I was just going, yo. 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 I was like, <laughs> yo, she's right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yo, she's right. And, you know, I, um, I was led to uh, Stephen's long speech where he says that your descendants will be in a foreign country where they'll be missed. I'm like, oh my gosh, the Americans, you know, I'm just, (laughs) and like everything was just, you know, like the Holy (laughs) Spirit was making everything so clear, you know, and um, I was reading that he said that, uh, where he says that you will worship God that you don't even know, and then he revealed that all the holidays that I've been celebrating my whole life, Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, pagan, I was like, oh my God, Holy Spirit, you know, I had to, I actually, I sent Speshi a video and I was like, Speshi, I am so sorry. Oh, actually, before that, um, when I left Speshi's room that evening, her sister's like, uh, how, how did it go? I'm like, yo, Kumisa, it's bad, hey. Now there's also, there's some guy called Dadan Zambi that she's speaking to. She's like, who's that? I'm like, I don't know, probably from America as well. I don't know who Dadan Zambi is. <laughs> probably some guy from America, you know? And I'm like, gosh, she's, she was telling me that she speaks to him and like, he tells her stuff. And then Kumisa's sister was like, oh no, this is really bad. Now, now there's a, there's a Dadan Zambi. <laughs> so I was like, yo, Kumisa, we Need to pray, we really need to pray. I don't know. It's like, it's like who could the stand and Zambi be? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't ask her. He's probably also from America. I don't know who that and Zambi is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I found out who that and Zambi is, I had to repent. I'm like, I'm so sorry, that the Zambi for thinking you were some guy from America. <laughs> Oh, 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 it was so crazy. It was, you know, and then the Holy Spirit, you know, he started, he started revealing himself to me, you know. And now now I'm convinced that, okay, you know what, Jesus is black, you know. Now I have to go back to the family. So now they're like, yo, my guys, she's worse. Now she's just singing. She's just always forever worshiping. She's, we can't sleep this God 2 a.m. in the morning. She's praying. <laughs> she's singing. And I'm like, you know, guys, um, I think Special might have a point. Um, I think Jesus really is black. They're like, no, you can't be in this cult as well. Not you. <laughs> she <laughs> dropped the Not you. you dropped the <laughs> <laughs> I remember Special's sister, 
she was like, no, Magazi, no, <laughs> not you as well. You can't also be in this cult. You were supposed to take her out, not go in the cult, you know? <laughs> I'm like, guys, I think we need to stop listening to Speci. Speci is making a lot of sense, you know? Let's, let's, let's listen to Speci. They're like, no, Magazi, you, you, you've gone to the dark side. You are, you're in this cult now as well, you know? We had, we had one family member in the cult. Now we have two, you know? <laughs> Welcome to the cult. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I found out that this American that he was list, she was listening to is actually Brother Jonathan, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, you know that guy she's always listening to? He's in Joburg, he's not American. He's <laughs> from Joburg. You're like, no, I'm like, yeah, I am like, oh, those guys from Joburg, you know? <laughs> so then I started listening to Brother Jonathan like excessively as well. And then I'm like, no, are you also listening to this guy as well? And I'm like, yes, I did. making a lot of sense. You need to listen to this guy, you know? And it was, it was so, but then like, we laugh about it, but then I think as, like I started growing and I thank Speci because Speci had to clear up a lot of things for me because I just felt like this is so much information. Everything that I thought I knew, turns out I don't know, yeah. you know? So, yeah. And she was, she played such an integral role in, um, <laughs> in just like my awakening, you know? And it, it, it was, it, 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 then, then it got tense in the family here because now we've got two cult members, you know? <laughs> so now it, now it's quite tense, you know, now when, when me and Speci are together, you know, everyone is like, you know, like, oh, there they go again about black Jesus, you know, <laughs> and, and we had, since we, we close some of us, so we are, we're an intellectual family, so we had like the most intellectual debate about the remnant, you know, and at the end of the debate, Speci's dad was like, you two and your black Jesus, I'm afraid of you guys, you and your black Jesus, I'm afraid of you too, you three, you, Reggie, Makazi, and black Jesus, like, I'm afraid of you guys, I'm afraid of you guys, and we were like, no, 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 don't be afraid of us, don't be afraid of us, you don't, you're not given the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and the sound mind, we rebuke that fear, yeah. don't be scared of us, pray for us, if indeed we are in a cult, then pray for us, we will also Ask pray, white Jesus to help you, <laughs> yeah. Ask white Jesus to help you, Ask <laughs> Jesus to help you, <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, it's, been, it's been a journey um i mean i haven't been awakened very long and the you know adam zambi was just i'm so grateful for um the support system that he's placed around me in my awakening um yes because it's, it's very it's very difficult waking up and and then you realize that everything that you thought you knew, you don't know. Yes. You are steeped in religion. You are a Christian, you, you know, and now you're realizing that, hey, you know, this is, this is not of, yeah, this is not, this is not of that and Zambi, you know, and I was just so, <laughs> so fortunate to yes. have Speci and to have a dear brother of mine, uh, Banzi, who's also, who had been awakened before me, people who could just, you know, just explain, explain to me like, well, okay, this is, this, this is what this means. People that I could call and, and just say, okay, please just explain to me, just explain. Cause I had to go even go back to Albanji history, you know, go back and, and I realized that, oh, actually we come from Congo. We migrated down as the coast is from Congo. So um, my dear friend Banzi was such a, a good help for that. And I, I just blessed the Hello. Lord. Oh yes, but hello, Banzi. Um, it was a great, great, great help. And um, I remember the one time. Um, now I've, I think I've been awakened for a week, and now Peshi is like, you know, my guys, there's midnight prayers. You should join. I'm like, I don't know, Peshi. I don't know. You know, I just really want to be incognito with this awakening because I've seen how people are treating you and and i don't you know i think i'm just going to be incognito she's, she's the treasurer of the church she yes, holds I'm the, the treasurer of my church oh, wow. yes, I'm, the treasurer, <laughs> I'm the treasurer of my church so transitioning she's out of my church. member yes it's, it's <laughs> first church member especially now is inviting me to the mid, mid, uh, midnight prayers and i'm like okay you know and i thought i'll just come in on zoom uh, my video will be off my sound will be off like i'm just i just don't want to discourage Speci. and then just before Speci, precious like Magazi, could you please just sing a song 
I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, and you're please sing a song in Corsa. So I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't want, I don't want these people to know me. These people got you into trouble. Like, I don't want the Americans to know me. <laughs> oh, Americans. They might pull me into something else. <laughs> oh, like, the Americans. <laughs> and then I was like, no, my guys, please sing. And I remember I sang the song, Onwele, uh, Onwele, yes. Holy. Oh. And that was just the beginning. And what people don't know is that I, I've never been in a worship team ever in my life before. No. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do not consider myself a singer. What I am is an intercessor. Um, my mother was actually an intercessor. My mom passed away when I was 17. My mom was an intercessor. And I was actually telling Brother Jonathan that my mom was what I thought then was the annoying intercessor. My mom was that mom that wakes up at night and goes around the house praying in tongues and spraying the blood of Jesus while we're trying to sleep. I'm like, they do are really trying to sleep and you're walking around open, anointing, you know, you're busy trying to sleep. Here's your mom, like laying hands on I you. I love like, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess why? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, wow, well, yes. Wildest. Like, yes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's such a sense of humor because I am that intercessor. Now I'm that crazy person who's walking around the house in the middle of the night praying. And I was thinking that my neighbors, they probably think the girl next door is crazy. Um, she's got weird sleeping hours. She's always praying with her loud voice, you know. But I told, I, I, I said to you, I said, you know, at Dead and Zambi, my neighbors, they will know that you are the king of kings. They will know that you are the Lord of lords. Yes. They will know that you are the creator. They will know, yes. even if it's from hearing me through their window, they will know because I will <laughs> not stop. I will not stop worshiping you. I will not oh, yeah. stop yeah. telling you who you mm -hmm. are. So now I'm also like Speshi, who's always singing, always praising, you know. So me and Speshi are a bit of, our our family does I, I think our family does not know what to do with us. Um yeah. they don't know they, they don't know what to do with us and black Jesus. And and now it's like black Jesus is ours. They're like, yeah, it's you guys and your black Jesus, you know? So so I was like, yeah, I can't wait for the day you guys are awoken. This is gonna be a really funny story, you know. Very interesting. It's going to be it's going to be so funny. So that is, you know, that's, that's who I am. That's what, that's how I got awakened. Um, yeah. Me and Speshi, she played, uh, her and, and Banzi and the midnight prayers, Friday night prayers played such an integral role. Um, uh, you know, during this awakening, um, the most high has revealed gifts within me mm -hmm. that I didn't know that I had. Wow. You know? Um, he revealed, shown to me that, I am an intercessor that he's called me to intercede for his people. Oh, he's called cool. me to worship him, to praise him, not necessarily by singing a song. Because I, I told the Most High, actually this morning, I said to him, I, said, I, I, don't, want, I don't want to perform when I'm worshiping. I want to worship you yeah. in spirit yeah. and in truth. Yeah. You know, I want to tell you who you are. I want to yeah. feel you moving in and amongst your people. Um, so uh, like so i've never I, I like i i mean i can i can hold a note because i'm bantu i mean which bantu people can't hold a note like bantu people can sing that's that's our thing we can especially the courses we can we can sing yeah. you know? uh -huh. but yeah. then there's the people like Speshi and the others that like take it to the next level so i've always considered myself a mediocre singer you know um but um the most high has just been revealing so much to me um and I, I was praying and asking him, what's my purpose? And I know that um, he's leading me towards um, business, towards agriculture, working with Manzi, working with Speshi, and, you know, in equipping his people, his nation, his, you know, his, his band to people and how to work the land, you know, yeah. and yeah. that's something that I never thought I would do as I'm, I can't even grow a pot, a pot plant. Like I had a pot plant and it died. Like that's how bad my pot fields <coughs> are. But now I'm like, you're most high. You're, we're gonna, I'm going to need a whole lot of your help because you know that I can't, I'm not good at growing anything, but I'm a, I'm a vessel. Use me. I've got yeah. two hands. I've got two hands. I'm just available for you to use me. Mm -hmm. um, it's fine. If I'm going to seem crazy for your honor, for your camble, for your glory. <laughs> 
then it's yes. okay. I will I will oh, do that. Yes. Yeah. And and that and that is my story. <laughs> Lovely story. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god I oh i was in tears oh, over here man. especially <laughs> you gave your aunt the kool-aid and she drunk it <laughs> vindication <laughs> i told you so i told you so <laughs> That's the only reason why I came on the Zoom. I was like, I just came to say, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> she got so much flack. She, she actually, she, we, we both are getting so much flack. You know, <laughs> our family hasn't awoken at all, and they don't want to hear anything about Yesaya. Nothing. They call it Black Jesus. Like, that don't don't talk about Black Jesus. So we are praying and for their awakening, and we will tell them one day. Don't you, it's funny now. Hey, now that now that you guys have awoken, you know. Now, this, this, it's been you, know you, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I would venture to say, present this mm. question to them and see mm. how they answer this. If he really is the white Jesus, we know he went in Egypt and stayed there for a good period of time and grew up in Egypt. So please explain to me how he's this pale skinned, blue eyed, flowing blonde hair guy. I, please explain it to me because it's beyond my imagination. I can't fathom that. Please explain it to me. I want to. I want to know their their response to that. We'll ask them in the next family debate about black, and we keep on saying that we don't like. Let's not use black Jesus, you know, because we can't even we can't even go to one like who's. It's his name is not Jesus. Stop saying Jesus. They're like oh, you got them black Jesus, you know. So we we team black Jesus here, me and Speshi, and they then then there's team white Jesus in our family. But we thank the Most High. Oh, and then another thing, um, I was talking to Speshi's sister, and she says, you know, Magazi. Ever since Black Jesus came into Special's life, we really are seeing a difference. She seems so happy, you know. She happily washes dishes. She happily does her chores. She just seems so happy and so easy to work with. Ever since Black Jesus came into her life, so Black Jesus is a good influence in her life. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one can touch a lot. One can touch a lot. <laughs> Won't you do it? <laughs> so I was like, oh well, we thank we thank Black Jesus for the fruits that Speshi is showing ever since Black Jesus came. <laughs> say, say that Black Jesus and that Tata and Zombie guy. Zombie, yes. <laughs> yeah. And those Americans. <laughs> those Americans. <laughs> Can't leave them out. <laughs> you Americans, shame on you, shame on you. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Americans are shaking, shaking the world. You know, Americans um, are shaking the world. Yeah. You're shaking the world. You're shaking the world. So Brenda. Yes. You know, um, it's funny that um, the. Deuteronomy 28 is one of the uh, central texts that um, those who are awakened are getting. Um, the first one I, I got was um, Revelation 2 verse 9 and Revelation 3 verse 9. And then I got the Deuteronomy 28. And then I got um, Genesis 15. So um, in the awakening and in this time, this is what is going on. But um, the what is happening is that he's calling the most is calling the young within the families like in special family like you know because they're the ones who are going to wind up teaching teaching those who who have been blinded for so long um or who have chosen blindness to the point where you know the same way they laughed at desire when he spoke is the same that's what is going on right now but he's going to be the one to finally open eyes because um the 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 depth the depth of the of the of the lie is so i mean mm -hmm. it's so deep mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. will kill people will disown their family members in order to to um to stay in the the old way 
-hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. to the point where they're not even thinking and paying attention to the fact that if, if, if I take you in my home and I use you to be my servant and mistreat you and rape you and do all of that. And then I give you a book, the word, everything that you espouse is going to be what I've taught you. And that's yeah. why we have to really truly, it's called an awakening. We really have to awake because the people are asleep. Yes. <clears throat> yes, they are. Yeah. Um, you guys, we, I, I, we told you our testimony, but we didn't tell you guys everything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody's testimony that is awakening seemed to be some similarities there. I remember my mom called Man Zombie. Y'all call him Man Zombie. Call, <laughs> call him and said, I want to talk to you because if I call Brenda, I'm going to get a mouthful. Imagine that, you all. Exactly. So, so she, she tells him about me not being in the church. And, you know, I'm going to let him tell her because she talked to him. And <laughs> I laughed. So tell them what she said. Yeah, she, she was telling me that, uh, you know, Brenda grew up. She was raised in the church all her life. And... <laughs> You know, she said, and now that she's not in the church, you know, is is bothering me. And um, uh, and this is it in a nutshell that um, <clears throat> she feel like Brenda left God and uh, gotten into something else. <laughs> I dropped the you know, so <laughs> And um, you know, now it, it was pretty much centering too around. Darren, what did you do? You know, <laughs> you you don't pull my daughter out into something else. You know, she didn't listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> so now you gotta fix this. Yeah. So you need to bring her back into the church. You know. So and she she actually said. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing now because it, to me it really is funny because they don't know. But that's it's not funny. But then it is funny. She told she told him that she uh, she had a dream that the church that we came out of. I, I, my background is Pentecostal, coaching, and she said the church we came out of. She had a dream he was preaching in the church, and I said, "Do you know what's going on in that church? You ain't heard what's been going on over there? No." I said, you haven't? Let me tell you. <laughs> so I began to tell her what was going on. She said, oh, well, maybe that's why God gave me that dream for him to go over. I said, no, he did not for us to go in a mess like that. He didn't yes. bring us out of mess to bring us back into the mess. No, he did yeah. not. <laughs> she, she told me, after Brenda told her what was going on, she told me, she said, Darren, God told me to tell you to go back to the church and, and join a church and maybe they'll make you pastor. pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and when I told her what was going on, she said, well, that's why. So he can go over there and teach them. I said, no, mom, no, 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 mom. No, we're not going back. We're not going back. <laughs> so I had to, I started praying. Uh, because my mom thought that I left the most high and as you all, you know, was into something else, something crazy. They never yeah. told us to our face that we were in a cult, but I'm, I'm assuming that they probably thought that we were in this cult. Mm -hmm. They, We actually have been accused of now being in Islam. Uh, someone called my mom and told my mom. So I know it was somebody that was on Facebook friends with uh, Menzombie, when he changed his name to Menzombie, they called my mom, got her hysterical. <laughs> Brenda and them are in Islam. He <laughs> changed his oh, name. Man. I mean, so we have been accused of, you name it. We, I, I'm telling you, we have not told you all the, the whole story. <laughs> so we went from a cult to Islam. So 
<laughs> I said, well, you know, why don't you tell that individual to give me a call and I'll explain yeah. to them what we're in. I'll gladly explain that, you know, just tell them That's to give the me thing. a call. <laughs> they won't do it. They won't do it. No one is, no one is awesome. Yeah. They're scared to, to, to talk to us because they get shocked when we preach scripture to them. They can <laughs> see that we're preaching scripture <laughs> off our mind and they have no right. response. <laughs> yes, oh, and they man. have no response. They have no response. Then they just keep quiet and they say they that they're afraid of us. They do. I have never seen my dad has four master's degrees. Okay. <laughs> One from the <laughs> University of London. Okay. He's an executive, he has four master's degrees. He studies for fun. Okay. He's that guy. <laughs> yeah, what is okay. both studies? <laughs> I have never seen him speechless. Oh, he, he becomes like with respect to him, he becomes like a child, it's the first time I'm seeing this great man. I love him, I'm gonna laugh to him. We're gonna laugh one day together. But he, he becomes like a little child when I tell him the information. He, he can't process it, like, like defensive, like a shame, but he'll get it one day. But it, it's like, yeah, it's something in the mind or in the spirit. It's like it, they short circuit, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, short circuit. Yeah, they it's like the computer gets jammed. The brain Especially, gets jammed inside. You know, you know, the computer gets jammed. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? It's because Isaiah said you cannot put new wine in old oh, wine skin. There you go. Oh, there you go. Hallelujah. We have to become new. It's nothing mm -hmm. to do with you being an old person. It has to do with your mindset. Yes. So yes. if your mindset yes. is not changed, you cannot yes. process what he wants to teach. Sure. Because yes. your mind has to be renewed yes. in order to be able to receive this yes. information. Yes. If yes. you're seeing this information right. through the eyes of your 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 oppressors, you yes. are still having that old cheap. wine skin. And yes. so that's gonna kill you. It's gonna burst your blood vessel. So it doesn't make sense. So you have to like be willing to, uh, to be open to listen or like I would tell my friend, <laughs> use your spirit eyes. Like I would say, like I was playing uh, Bantu music for my friend. I said to her, she wants to study with me. And I, you know, I'm in a different way and she wants to study with me and I'm glad. So I put the music on She's listening to the music. I, I said to her before I put it on, I said, I need you to listen this with spirit eyes. And when she started to listen, yes. spirit ears, and when she started, my mom is right in, with me right now listening in. And when she started to listen, she was worshiping and she was interpreting the song. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, uh, Bayete. And she yes. was and her whole being changed. We were in her vehicle because she picked me up. And her whole being changed. She's like, she's like, send it to me, send it to me. I gotta go home. Send it. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a mindset and a willingness to change. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, get rid of that baggage. Yes, yes. yes get Amanda. rid of that baggage. Yes, you yes. got to take off that old and yes. put on yes. the new. New, yeah. And a lot of our, a lot of our people don't want to take off the old. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom because she kept on harping about me not being at church, not being at church, not being at church. And I remember mm -hmm. asking her, I said, I said, Mom, I said, what does church mean? She said, what do you mean? I said, what does it mean? Well, it's the place where you go to worship. I said, but what does church mean? What is the meaning of it? That is mean, yeah, yeah. It's where we go to worship. What are you talking about? I said, you don't even know the meaning of the word church. I said, your pastor has failed you. I said, go back to your pastor. Ask him. What does it mean? I said, he's mm -hmm. told you. You've been in church all these years and you don't know what the meaning of church is. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I said, it's not even the word church. Yeah. Ask your pastor, see if he knows. Mm -hmm. And then I told her, I said, you all are concerned about us not being in a, a building. I said, yeah. let me ask you a question. And this is how the most high has led me to deal with everybody that question 
me in my wall. <clears throat> I present a question to them. This is what how he told me to deal with this. I said, so I asked her, I said, I said, Mom, what church did Adam go to? What church did Eve go to? I said, what church did Eve go to? What church did Abraham go to? Isaac, Jacob, what church did they go to? I said, these men had such a close relationship with the Most High and an encounter way more closer than what we have. So what church did they go to? She was speaking so this is how the Most High is dealing with me to get them to think. That's yeah. why I told you all, because this is how he dealt with me. So mm -hmm. it start, it's starting to become habit now, to a, a habit, to ask them, say, please explain to me how it is that a yeah. white person can go and hide amongst black people in the land of black people for X amount of years right. and not be discovered. I, I can't understand that. And so when you come to them in that manner, like uh, uh, Arsenio Hall used to say, it's going to make them go, hmm, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how he had me to deal with them. And I'm finding out that a lot of them, like your father, are just speechless. They don't know what to say because they can't answer it. Mm -hmm. And I did it to my cousin when she was talking about tithing, tithing. And I'm sitting here listening, listening to her and I said, yeah, I don't tithe. You don't tie. I said, well, well, hold up, wait a minute. What, 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 which tie are you talking about? Yeah. And she, like my mom. Well, you know, but you get to the church every Sunday. I said, no, but which one? You know, you, what we bring up every Sunday that we're supposed to get, which one? But 10%. I said, you know what? I said, you don't even know that there are several different types of tie. Yes. She said, no, I don't. I said, well, you know what? This conversation is moot at this point. There's no need for us to further discuss. I said, because yeah. you don't even know. I said, go back and study. When you have studied, then you and I can have this conversation. And Darren said, Brenda, you were a bit harsh with her. <laughs> <laughs> but sister Brenda, listen, what is happening right now? Confirmation of what you're saying. Everybody's doing what you're doing. They're Zooming because the building has been closed that they're trying to open corona came and so every man each man had to get into his own closet each person had to find a way to worship and to praise and to communicate with the creator and mm -hmm. that's what is going on right now because the church as we know it has failed the people because mm -hmm. either they knew the truth and refused to tell it in order to gain money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or or they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And when you don't know, you're supposed to seek because he says if you seek, you will find if you search with all your heart. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I keep saying Matthew 13 because I can't, because that's what the Lord has placed in me, that the people have chosen to be blind. <clears throat> wow. You know, before the church closed, I, I told my mom and my best friend before it even happened, I said, I had been saying this for a while. My daughter-in-law said, she said, Miss Brenda, you kept saying the church going to close. The church going to close. She said, the church closed. I told them, I said, he's going to destroy all man-made religion. I said, he's going to close the doors of the church. I kept telling them, I kept telling them, and it happened. And they think it's going to open. They Still wanna go they back. On they it. still yes. wanna go back. Yes. Yes. They don't see that the it's, it is the move of the most high that is doing this. It's, it's, I was talking to my friend this morning and my husband said I, I called to tell her she wants to go on the trip that we were going in June and to register. And somehow I always end up ministering to her. And he said, <laughs> he said, How did y'all get on that? I said, I don't know. I said, we were talking about something and it just kind of segue into that. And I got to thinking, I said, it was about school, then coronavirus. Then I talked about fear, the spirit of fear. I said, it just led into me ministering to, to her, but. Never talked to her about what she was never she called to talk to never. her about. Yeah, never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was actually yeah. saying to brother Jonathan that the, the coronavirus for me, has been the biggest blessing 
because it forced me to spend time with the most high and not to depend on my pastor for sustenance you know um, uh-huh. and i remember mm. at the beginning of, of 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 the lockdown i had all my devotions td jakes jewel austin i was like yo most high me and you you're gonna go and you know the most high rebuked me he was like why are you getting someone else's revelation i want to speak to you directly <laughs> you know so we put i put them in what me and special call the the, the burn pile we have a, yes. a pile of stuff we're gonna pile. the td jakes christmas trees eggs jewel austin we've got a pile that's gonna have a bonfire <laughs> <laughs> and burn them <laughs> burn piles. <laughs> so I've kept it in the burn pile so that when we have time we, we can have a big bonfire yeah, and burn cool. all this doctrine. <laughs> wow. So oh, wow. Is, uh, the bless I, I was actually saying to Brother Yanata that there's there's been a blessing for, for me in COVID because I'm spending time at home. I'm spending time with the Most High. And I'm realizing that if I spend time with the Most High, He speaks to me. Yes, He you does. He speaks yeah. to me. I don't need to go to church on a Sunday to hear someone else's revelation. He can speak to me directly without, you know, an in-between mm. person. And if it wasn't for the lockdown and the closing down of the churches, I would have never figured that out myself, you know? But it's a bit awkward for me because, you know, I'm the treasurer at my church and I just asked the most how to give me wisdom because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to, you know, come out. And they've just opened our church and, you know, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's really <laughs> tough. <laughs> and I'm- <laughs> See Fancy come in and she said the same thing happened to her. Her husband sat her down, so she drank the Kool Aid too. And uh, I think she said her mom, yeah, her mother. She yeah. can tell her story though if she wants to come on and share. Said her mother sat her husband down and said the same thing. Oh wow, this is interesting, you guys. And this is just the beginning. Wonderful. We have not yet seen the move mm-hmm. of the Most High. <clears throat> Even yeah. last night, Fancy and Bangwa Bele. There are some things that were spoken, I'm quite sure not just to us, but to others that was not even revealed. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's it, just just be on the alert. Be on the alert. This is just the beginning. This yeah. is just the beginning. Yeah. The world is it's it's getting ready to yeah. see who the apple of Yah's eye is. Yeah. 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 That is mm. They're getting ready to Alleluia, see Lord. the power. <laughs> mm, I feel like I said that. Mm. They're oh, getting really yeah. power. Yeah. You know, I was listening to someone and I can't remember exactly uh, who it was that said it in the exact words, but they said that when a person starts learning their history and who they are, it's mm. like their DNA shifts and it, re- it reinvigorates. And that's mm. what's happening to us because we found out who we what were like, wait a minute. This, this is us. There's a shift in our DNA and something, mm. something is happening on the inside in our DNA because DNA stores who we yeah. are, memories, even from my ancestors. That's why a lot of us, even people on the, on the motherland that I, I have connected with, they like, there's several of them have said, it's like I know you. It's like I've been knowing you. I've had multiple ones tell me that. And I'm the same way. It's, it's like... I know you, like we've been knowing each other Mm. forever. Mm. It's something in that DNA, even in the language that's within us, it's gonna come forth. Our language is in us. They thought they took it away. But when the first I what he spoke to me last night, it Mm. it let me know that it's dormant. Mm. Sister Brenda. It's not gone. It's dormant. Yes, ma'am. My mom, my mom saw the picture on the Zoom. She saw you. She she was just looking. She said, that one in red looks like you, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Tell mom I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's hearing you. Hi, hi. <laughs> you're, you're such a close woman, mom, Brenda. Like when I first yes. saw you, yeah. the fire. <laughs> you literally, they would think you're close to you. They think you're one of us because of your mannerisms, your fear. Yes. And yes. close yes. women are assertive. You know, when we believe in something, we speak, and we don't just speak, you feel it in your soul. <laughs> you know, when, you, when we speak in your fire, it's like Tosa for real, like typical Tosa woman. 
You know, your manners, uh, mom, Brenda, your manners is already close. I was like, yeah, this one, my mom calls Alona, like her manner, just how assertive she is, you know. I can see, like, you know, it's, it's, it's really, you, <laughs> I'm sure you have some closer blood. <laughs> you are so assertive. She reminded me of my own mother. I was like, no, man, why does she seem to me? like, no, man, this manners is all my mother's manners. This is how she was, you know. <laughs> You know, it's interesting yeah. you guys say that because when, um, especially um, when you were, I, no, maybe that was you about what ballet, uh, when you were saying that, um, yeah, that was you saying that coasters are know it all, even if they don't know it. I <laughs> let, you, did you see how he reacted? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I let, Wasn't that obvious? I let, <laughs> no comment. Wasn't that obvious? I, I, I was not going to go in there. I was not going to go there. I said, I'm not saying anything. I don't know nothing. As they say, love is the word for me. Love. So I, sometimes, sometimes if I'm saying something and she's against what I'm saying, I just sit back. I just sit back and be quiet. I'm like, look. But this has this, this been me all my life. When I, was, I remember when I was real young. Oh, that's funny. Neighborhood friends, they call me the walking almanac. They <laughs> said she's a know-it-all. <laughs> they told me, they said, you need to be a lawyer when you grow up because you can argue your case even when it's wrong. You can argue. Mm. You can argue and your dad, case. You actually remind me of Spacious Dad because Spacious yes. Dad also, when Spacious Mom would go on, because obviously she knows it all now, Spacious Dad is like, okay, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> You're so calm and chill. You're so calm and like, yes, dear. The <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. You're right. Yeah. You're all wrong. You're right. Yes, dear. Remember, I said see, those DNA. The DNA. <laughs> see, to me, when when I back up, I say, okay, I'm just gonna let her see. I'm gonna let her. See. <laughs> I just leave it alone, and then she'll come back and say, you know, Darren, you were right. And <laughs> 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 but that's not often, you guys. That's not often that I do that. It's a little, 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 she's trying to justify it. <laughs> she's trying to justify it. Oh, you'll fit right in. You'll fit right in. Oh, you'll fit right in. <laughs>